Okay, I obsess about Epcot. I don't know what it is. I was just, as a kid in the 80s, Epcot was like, this is before like MGM was open. Like Epcot was the new Disney park, you know? So it was just ingrained in my head. Like Epcot is the most cutting edge, amazing place in the world. And I absolutely love Epcot. It's my favorite place to go. Um, and I haven't been there since 2007. I really would, really would like to go back. Um, but I just obsess about Epcot. And I have so much useless knowledge that I would love to share with you in this video about Epcot. And uh, thankfully, uh, this world, low poly Epcot in the VR chat has been recently updated. And there's lots of cool stuff here to see now. Because I was here earlier. Uh, months and months and months ago and there it was nice there really wasn't much to see but now oh my god there's so much new stuff here with the rides and I'm gonna go through and show you the rides and tell you what I know and just geek out about everything they added these uh, weird like tombstone looking things these like these weird granite things and they had like this these little stainless steel plates and if you give Disney a lot of money they would laser engrave your face on a piece of metal and bolt it to the stone and it would, it, there was just endless faces on these walls and it was to me it just it, I don't know if they're still there but it just felt really creepy because it was like it almost looked like tombstones of like these are like all dead people or something I don't know it was it was just really weird and like eerie it didn't feel like cool or like it just <laughs> and here it is the centerpiece. This is Spaceship Earth. Now, a lot of people call this Epcot. You're like, let's go on Epcot. You know, like, no, that that that's not tech. That's not Epcot. That is Spaceship Earth. Epcot is the name of the park, the entire park. That's not the ride. Uh, Epcot stands for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. Even when you're first coming in, is so massive, and it just. It's such a weird thing because it's like this just giant ride, but everybody's just going into this really tiny entrance. It looks like a little box. It was it's strange because like you're going up inside, but like it just doesn't look like everybody could fit in there. It was it's such a strange ride. And the, the way the entrance is with the giant mural on the wall and everything, and like oh, I, I love it. I love uh, Spaceship Earth so much. Uh, it was originally sponsored by Bell Labs and then it was taken over by uh, at and I, 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 I think it's Siemens now, or Simmons, or something like that. That's the, that's the, uh, the sponsor for it. But I definitely remember going on it when it was uh, sponsored by at and And they did some updates to it when I was there. The last time I was here was in 2007. But uh, it used to be Walter Cronkite as the uh, narrator. And I, it, it's weird with, with uh, Spaceship Earth, you know how like, you have certain smells and you smell that and it just immediately takes you back to that place? For me, like barbecue sauce or that weird fake smoke smell because every time I smell barbecue sauce it just reminds me of Spaceship Earth because like there's a part where you're going through and it's like supposed to be like the Roman, you know, the fall of the Roman Empire and everything's burning and they have this like fake smoke smell that they pump into that section of the ride but it just permeates the entire place and the whole thing just smells like barbecue sauce and like so every time i smell barbecue sauce i'm like oh the spaceship earth <laughs> but oh uh, yeah it was it was such a cool thing and at the end when you, when you used to be at the top and there was like a space station they took eventually took all that out but it was like you're at the top and it's like a like a planetarium and then you come back like backwards down this thing and there was like originally it was all these mirrors like these weird projections of like these like 80s like 70s hippie kids like running through the fields and there was like a song called tomorrow's child and then and tomorrow's child and, and and then you come back down and then they dump you into this like room it's over it's over there and like it was just like telephones because this was like before cell phones and everything it was it was like ooh, like look at the world's biggest phone and you can call people on it and i remember like the buttons being like huge you go in this room and you 
smashing these buttons and we called my aunt and we're like oh we're having we're in Disney World having fun and uh, it was yeah it was really cool like um, it, when it was when it was owned by uh, AT&T oh and like right after you go underneath Spaceship Earth and you come into these like round circular buildings and this originally was called Communicore and it was like showcasing uh, computers and technology and that was a really cool thing with Epcot it was like they wanted to show you like all the stuff like all the computers and stuff like how they make everything work and everything so like it was so cool to see this stuff because I was a kid I, the first time I was here was in 1987 and like I, I never even you know we never I didn't have, my family didn't have a computer and stuff like that so like we'd go here and it was like whoa like computers can do all this amazing things and I saw so many like new things every time I came to Epcot and, and it's weird because like Epcot really did leave a lasting impression on me because now as an adult I absolutely love computers and, and even like music the music of the park was so spacey and, and and stuff and that's why I have like this weird love with like synthesizers and stuff because I heard that music when I was a kid when we go to Epcot and I'm like what is this like I, I, I love this so like I absolutely love the music and the themes and everything like that like with the with the, with the rides and it, it's just I don't know I that's, that's why I'm like a weird weirdly obsessed with this park I mean I could talk to you about it all sorts of stuff I go on and on but uh, yeah definitely Communicore was really cool and I I remember there was like a robot that drew my picture it was like a robot arm and it has it was they, they painted it pink and it had a French accent and it was like I'm going to draw your picture and it did it was like holy crap that's amazing uh, eventually though Communicore was changed over to Innoventions and it was showing more computers and video games and stuff like that. That was the first place I ever saw SimCity 2000 was in um, Innoventions. I, I was like, oh, you could like break buildings. I didn't have a computer and I, and I was like, what is this? It was like, this, and I had remember playing with the bulldozer and just destroying all the buildings in, in uh, Innoventions. And I thought that was the coolest thing, but I didn't, I couldn't play it anywhere else because I didn't have a computer. Uh, but it was it was really cool. Uh, coming up is Horizons. I absolutely loved this ride, even though the ride itself was not that exciting. It was basically like Carol Carousel of Progress, but like an emotion like dark ride kind of thing. Epcot itself opened up in uh, October first, nineteen eighty two, and then. The Horizons actually opened up in 1983, uh, so it was like it was a little bit after they were still working on it. But I, I know I absolutely adored this ride. It's just like the, the presence of like the way the building looks and and everything, and it was just it was so cool. And they had these giant like screens, uh, these Omnisphere screens, kind of like an IMAX screen. They had two of these things, and the cars would pass through them and just. Your entire field of vision was like engulfed with these giant screens, and it was showing you the future and microchips and space, and it was, it was it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. And at the end of the ride, you got to choose your own like adventure. You could do like space, sea, or like land or something like that. And you would hit the button, and then like this little mini IMAX screen would like come in front of the car and like follow alongside the car and it was like a little motion ride and it was based on your selection and I was like that was like mind-blowing like I, when I was a kid I'm like how did they do this because it was like you know you didn't have that kind of technology and stuff so it was like that was so cool and I absolutely loved that and it, this was originally sponsored by uh, General Electric and unfortunately uh, I think they stopped sponsoring it in 93 and then Disney just kind of floated it for a little bit while and it wasn't until like I think 1999 and they tore it down and it was crazy because this thing was so huge and they put like the little fake wall up to try to be like okay we're, we're making something new but it was big you couldn't even cover it up so like there was just like steel and and and, and cheat rock and things is flying and blowing in the wind it was like horrifying looking and they were just chipping away at it as they were tearing it down and I'm like oh, like 
I really wish they would have just kept the building and like did something with it instead of completely destroying it because like it looks so awesome. And they put in that uh, mission space ride sponsored by Hewlett Packard, and it's like it's it's nice. It, it, it's just like Epcot itself is gearing up for more intensive rides, and it's like it, they lost that whole like World's Fair vibe that I absolutely loved. Like that whole idea of showcasing technologies and 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 things in the future concepts, you know, and stuff like that. Like I, I really like just like slow rides and it will just showcase things. Like that's what the World's Fair was kind of like. And and that was that's cool. I really like that. You know, because anybody can ride these things. And they everything that every time they tear something down or they update it, it's it's losing a little bit of that World's Fair vibe. And I think Epcot is totally losing it now. Like it's going completely to everything's going to be based on a movie or a cartoon or something like that and it's it, it's it's lost that whole you know showcase feel so this pavilion is the wonders of life pavilion sponsored by metlife um i i actually i still in my head think this is like a new part of epcot even though it's totally defunct already uh this was actually built in 1989 and it housed Body Wars, which was like a motion simulator ride, which was really cool because the whole thing was like someone had a splinter in their finger and they're like, we're going to, Mike, we're going to shrink you down and show you how the body fights infections, you know? And like, it goes through the bloodstream and then there's like a splinter and then like it looks like a huge chunk of wood and the lady's like stuck and then she floats away and you have to go rescue her or something. It, it was crazy. And it's funny because at the same time, I remember like Inner Space, the movie where the guy gets shrunk down and goes into the body, like that was a huge movie. Uh, so like it totally was riding on on the on that type of thing. And there was other things in there, like uh, there was cranium something, some brainy worlds or something like that. And they had these bicycles you could pedal, and they were hooked to like a laser displayer that was like it looked like you were riding through the park. So the faster you pedaled, it would just speed up the video, you know. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a fun little thing, and. It closed like in 2005, 2006. I don't know. It was weird. They closed it, but it's technically not closed because they'll do like weird, like wine and cheese tasting kind of things and or some type of special like corporate event. They'll actually open this up to like people, like for companies and stuff. And you can go in there. And I actually saw somebody online uh, sneak into one of these. It was like during a wine and cheese test or some uh, tasting thing. And they, they, the curtains and everything for body war, it was like these curtains covering up where the entrance to the body wars was, was. And they snuck in. And like the line queue and the signage and everything is still back there. It's like, oh, that's so cool to think about. So this is the Universe of Energy Pavilion sponsored by Exxon. Uh, this this thing actually had like solar cells like on the roof and stuff and this was like crazy technology for the 80s and it partially did actually power the ride uh, to do this and it was again it was when you were a kid it was a mind-blowing experience they, they also had some early form of like projection mapping or something I remember like you'd go in and there was a, a lot of these rides at the time they had like a film or something you could watch and they would put you on the ride and uh, that format I think just for the volume of people they, they totally don't do this anymore they don't show films and things like that and they, they so they'd show you this film and the the screen were, were these like triangle things and they would like flip around and like project only on certain pieces and then flip the other way and it was like really really cool stuff and so you watch the film and you're like oh that's cool you know whatever and then the doors open underneath the screen and then you walk in and there's this giant room that looks like a theater like with these rows of seats and everything and there's these like gold curtains like these really 80s looking curtains and you'd sit down and you're like, oh, this must be like a stage show or whatever. And then the curtains rise and it's like Jurassic period with the dinosaurs. It's like all prehistoric. And then the, all the cars, the, the, the theater seat things are like these giant, they're huge. I think you sit like 
10, 15 people across, and there was like 10 rows. It was massive. And it would go in to the into the ride, and it was you'd go through and you'd see all the dinosaurs, and then it was like swamp and fog, and it was awesome. It was so cool. I love that ride. And eventually they did update it. They added um, Ellen and Bill Nye or something like that. And it was like they ripped out the cool spinning projection screens and they just put like regular flat screens in there. And they, it was like the whole thing was like Ellen was on like a Jeopardy show or something and she was answering things wrong. And then Bill Nye's like, I'm going to show you energy or something. And then you go in and it was still dinosaurs, but then it is like put in these like animatronic, like Ellen DeGeneres robots in there. And it just like, I don't know. I, it didn't really make sense. I, I, I see what they were trying to do, but it was just like, really? Like that's, that's your update. And I remember it was really funny because if there were certain parts of the ride, like you could like look back and you'd see an Ellen robot. And then you look the other direction, like around the corner and you'd see the other Ellen robot. So they just like, Ellen clones in the ride. It was, ugh. I don't know. It was, I didn't like it. Like, I, it was, it was strange. And now I think they completely gutted this building. Like, totally. Like, they ripped the walls out of it. And, and I think they're putting it again. They're, they're, they're getting rid of that, you know, showcase world's fair thing. And they're turning it to like Guardians of the Galaxy ride. And I'm like, ugh. all right, you know? I mean, yeah, it'll probably be fun, but like, what what happened to like teaching people stuff? You know, like energy and, and uh, I don't know. This is the World of Motion Pavilion, sponsored by General Motors. Uh, this was eventually destroyed to build Test Track, which I also think is spent is uh, sponsored by General Motors. Um, but I really liked World of Motion because it also. Had, it was it was showcasing like the history of the automobile and it, it, even the entrance was really cool because it was like it was this round building but it was also like open like the line went inside the building but it was like this giant cavernous space and like it had this like I remember there was like conveyor belts or something these like really long I remember really long conveyor belts and you just kind of got on the ride as it was moving and it just was this weird sweepy ramp like going up and it was just like it was cool and like you could sit like on the in the car like you're on the ride and it's gradually going into the into the building and you can look out and like see spaceship earth and the rest of the park it was so nice like they they really at the time were when they were planning these rides like they knew like okay like this is the view you're gonna get. Like you have to incorporate it with like the rest of the park and make it like impress. It was just, they really put so much thought like into that. And it, it, it was really nice. And you go in and it would just, you know, it was, it was the history of the car. And what was really cool at the end of the ride, they, it, the exit goes into like this giant hall where they had all concept cars and stuff. And, and this is back like in the, like the late eighties and stuff. And they're showing things like GPS and, like like it, it, even airbags were still kind of like a new thing and it was i remember like going there and just my mind just losing my mind looking at all these future cars and it's funny because like we kind of did get a couple of those things but like the 80s concept cars were like spaceships and i'm like i can't wait i can't wait for this stuff in the future you know and it was <laughs> As a kid, I absolutely loved that. And it was really cool. There was this one thing, and like later on in the 90s, they had these driving simulators that had like, they were hooked up to like laser disc players. And it was just like a giant tower of laser disc players, like in this glass box. And it was like, oh my God, this is like so crazy, like high tech, you know, it was so, it was so funny. Um, but once again, you know, they, they ripped that out to put more a more intensive ride. Um, Test Track is fun. I do like Test Track, you know. Uh, it, it's good. But I, it, it just, you know, you, you reflect on things and you, you miss the old stuff, you know. But it's one of those things, though. If they kept it around, like, 
would people really care about it now? You know, it's like, because it would be a slow ride and it's like, eh, you know. So it's really hard to gauge. It's, it's especially like as you get older and you look back at the other things and like, you do you think they were that um, like that amazing or is it just you're, you know, reminiscing about stuff? But, um, you know, what are you going to do? I, I can't believe they actually put this weird like little blocky thing over here. Um, that's not even a ride. That is the Odyssey restaurant. It, it was a, so there's like a lake, like a little water thing over here. And there's like these kind of annoyingly long bridges that go over the water and over to this like little building here. And it's, it, I don't think they have even used it as a restaurant in like the last like 30 years. Like I barely remember they used to do like, uh, you could eat lunch or breakfast with the characters or something in there. Um, that's the only thing I really remember. But they basically closed that whole thing off. And you could still see inside. Like, you can see the lights on and everything. It's really weird. But there's also a bathroom on the outside of that. Like, there's a public bathroom. And you can actually... That's just, it's actually a pretty good bathroom because no one really goes all the way over there to use the bathroom. Uh, sometimes they use the bridge as a shortcut to get over like to the Mexico ride, but like, um, if you need to take a crap, that's a nice clean bathroom with not a lot of people in it because no one wants to walk all the way out over to the Odyssey. <laughs> Look, there it is. There's the annoying bridge. They even got that. Yeah, yeah, the entrance to the bathrooms is like right around this general area. This was the Living Seas, sponsored by United Technologies. Uh, it was... This was a really another one of those mind-blowing rides as a kid. Uh, you'd go in, and then they'd show you this film about how like the planet like filled up with water, and the, and the rains came, and the deluge, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained, and it was like the volcanoes, and it was showing how land masses were formed, and just how the Earth was formed, and it was like such a mind-blowing film. And at the end, they, they it was like at the end of the film there was like this vector you know 3d thing of like and in the future there'll be the sea base alpha one and it like goes into the ocean and there's like this thing and this like green wireframe thing and it's like and it's a reality you can be there and it was like and it turned into like a photograph of this like sea base and i'm like oh my god and then like the doors open and then you go into this like little elevator thing and they, they had these like stone walls with water and bubbles and and it was like you could see the levels of like your it felt like you were going down the floor was shaking and as a kid I was like oh my god this is amazing we're actually going there we're going all the way underground like under the water into the sea base and you get there and then you go on this little tram and it goes like into this like t this aquarium tank and there's fish and everything going around and then you get off the tram and then you're in the sea base and i was like this is so cool and then they had this giant like tube and the guy would dive in and stuff and then there was like oh what was it there was like a uh, one of those like scuba suit things like the giant like diving bell suits and you could control and like the knobs and the claw hands and stuff it was awesome i absolutely loved the living seas and when i went back in 2007 it broke my heart what they did to it. They they turned it into like Finding Nemo Land or something, and they ripped out all of the the film and the the, the ride piece. They basically just opened the exit door, and were just like, yeah, this is Finding Nemo. Just walk right in, and you can talk to like the turtle or something. And it was like, that's it. Like this is what you did. This is the update to the ride. There's not even a ride anymore. It was. Uh... Uh, I don't know. It just, it just, I could, again, it's, I think they look at it and they're like the volume of people, we can't have people coming in, watching a movie and then going into an elevator and standing there and literally doing nothing so they could go onto a little ride that goes through a, a fish tank, you know, like they're like, just forget it, get rid of all of that and just open the door. Like, I hate that, but you know, what are you going to do? This is the land it was originally sponsored by Kraft Foods, and I think it's now sponsored by Nestle. Uh, it, it was, it, it's very 80s, like, it's so cool. And, and what I really like that, they really didn't screw with it too much. 
Uh, the building itself looks pretty much exactly as it did, like exterior-wise, uh, as a kid, when I remember it as a kid. And you go in and, and there's this entrance with all these like mosaic tiles. It shows like the layers of the earth and everything like that. And there's a boat ride that you can take in this, and it shows you like how they like farm fish and they, and the hydroponics, and it's really really cool. And then there's a restaurant in there where you can eat the food that's actually being grown on the ride, and it was like really good. Uh, so I, yeah, I think that was a ro I think it was a rotating restaurant. I think ro yeah, I think it did rotate. Um, but yeah, that was really really nice. And there used to be a little, and there was also a, like a little show in there called Kitchen Cabaret, which I loved as a kid. I loved that show, and it was like a kitchen with all this like talking food and pots and pans and things. It was really cool. And then they later updated to like uh, some type of Lion King animatronic like show, uh, which I remember being also pretty good i don't know if it's still there or not but then they later on they added soren and that ride is really good that when i you know again i, I seem to be complaining every time epcot does or changes something but soren was an amazing addition to epcot uh, the ride is is great. It's it's not too violent. A lot of people can ride it, uh, and it's just it's a, a very cool experience because it, it you just feels like you're flying, and you can smell like the oranges, and and it's it's really really cool, and it's definitely worth it. And here we have Journey into Imagination. I think a lot of people my age love this. This is probably the most favorite thing in Epcot for a lot of people. Uh, and at the time, you know, it was Figment and uh, the, the, I can't remember the Nick guy's name, the Dream Catcher or something like that. And like, it was good. It was a good ride. The characters were good. Uh, it was it was really fun. Like, I absolutely love that that ride. And then like when you got off uh, upstairs was like this whole like interactive thing. They had this rainbow tunnel with these neon lights you could walk through and then like those pit you know those pins you can stick your hand through and it makes the shape of your hand they had giant tables like that like dining room sized tables with the pins and you could like go in and stick your hands in there and everything and they uh even like they were showing you how like green screens worked and stuff like you chroma create yourself into like a background and everything and it, it was really cool it was so cool they was like these things you could jump on the floor they make all these different sounds it was it was really really neat i i love that place like and eventually they updated it with like Eric Idle and stuff and they just took most of the ride out and it's when they update it just felt cheap like it was like they just felt like it was the cheap way out like you, you, I don't know they had like a pickup truck like bolted to the ceiling an old Chevy S10 pickup truck and it was like oh look everything's upside down that's wacky you know and to, to me I'm like Disney really wouldn't do that they wouldn't put an old truck on a ceiling like they would make some type of like cartoon truck or I don't know something it just it, it just felt like rushed and cheap and eh, you know and, and the whole upstairs you, you couldn't you can't even go up in there anymore I think it's like a VIP lounge or something now and, and all that stuff is gone like oh, it was it was so cool I I don't remember if there if imagination actually had a sponsor or not I, I remember there was a lot of like Kodak signs like this is a Kodak spot you know and I don't know if, there was a, if they were the actual uh, sponsor or not. There was a Kodak camera store, too, in here somewhere, I think. But, uh, yeah. Oh, and these round things, too. They were, like, these leaping water things. And it was pretty cool because it was that laminar flow type of water. It would go, whoosh, like, into another one of these round things, and it would jump. It was timed, like, it was, like the water was actually jumping. That was, like, I mean, back then, to do that, that's, like, that's really, really cool. And I, I remember, like... There was bathrooms over. I don't, why do I remember so much about the bathrooms? But there was bathrooms over there, and I'd be like waiting for my mom or something to come out, and I'd just be like staring at the fountains. And you, if you stayed over here long enough, you'd totally see someone just get beamed right in the head with like water. If you were standing like in the path of where, because there was spots where the thing jumped, the water would go over the walkway, and back then like. They didn't care. People would take their kids and st stuff them right on top of it, and they were running on the on the mesh, and, and it was it was it was it was craziness. And like, so pe you you totally get people just smacked in the face with this laminar flow of water. You know, it was it was pretty cool. I I have no idea what this giant mound of dirt is. 
Uh, I know I know they're still working on the world, so they're constantly adding things. But I there's there's like this giant like pile of dirt. I don't know. But behind the pile of dirt, there's this box, and that was the theater for uh, Captain EO. Uh, which was the, uh, the 3D movie with Michael Jackson, and I remember that scared the living crap out of me. Uh, I, I I don't remember much about the movie, but there was like this one part where like some type of alien thing or some spooky guy like comes out of the ceiling with all these like cables or something. I haven't seen that movie. It's got to be 30 something years, but like that was so scary and it was in 3D and it was like oh my god, you know. Um, it was it was pretty crazy and. That was eventually replaced with Honey, I Shrunk the Audience, which was cool. I actually really, that was a really fun, a really fun thing. Um, and I don't, they switched it again to something else now. I, I don't, I don't remember. So this building over here is kind of part of like the Communicore Center. Um, but they added, there was like restaurants and places to get food and things like in, in here. And I remember one time, it was really strange, like... We were, me and my family were in there eating, and uh, one of the, like the Disney staff members like come comes over to the table, and we're like, "Hey, does your son like to play video games?" And I'm like, "Hell yeah, I like to play video games," you know, because I was like ten years old or whatever. And they're like, "Oh, would you like to join us like on a test, like for a new video game?" And I'm like, "Yeah, like this is gonna be great," you know. And so we finished up, and they, they gave us, I think, a little like number or something, a little paper, and in this building there was like a walled off section like this giant room that it didn't really you didn't even know it was there because it just looked like a hallway but there was a room in here and they had a uh, virtual reality technology in here and they took a handful of families you know they, like every day or whatever and they were like we're gonna show you something that we're working on and, and it's gonna be really fun it was aladdin vr and it was like a virtual reality headset and the, a carpet, like an actual physical carpet that you were on. And you'd grab the carpet and you'd twist it to steer over like Agrabah and fly the carpet around and in VR. And I was like, oh my God, this is the most epic video game I would ever seen in my life. And I was, I was going nuts. I was so excited. And so like, the three other families that were in front of us got to play a little bit of it. And I was like, oh my God. And we were coming up next and something went wrong with the computer. And they're like, oh, it's busted. Sorry, guys. And I, we were there for like an hour, you know, waiting and watching everyone on this, like the kids on the screen playing Aladdin VR. And I was like, I'm next. I'm next. And it, I, it came up to me and they were like going to restart it or something. And it, it crashed. And it was like, you gotta be kidding me. And I never got to play Aladdin VR. I was like, oh. And I, it, it's funny, because like, still to this day, I'm like, what was that like, you know? And I think later on, they added that to Disney Quest. I think that was an actual thing, but at the time, they were testing it, you know? And uh, it's just, it's so strange, because here we come full circle, and I'm actually in VR, in, Epcot pointing to the spot where I initially was going to play experience virtual reality for the first time like that is so weird to think about like that was such a futuristic thing and now we have it like that is so cool to think about I, I really hope they add they keep working on this world because it looks cool it looks really cool and uh Thanks, thanks for watching my video and uh, listening to me geek out about all these rides and the useless information that I have in my head about these rides. It was so fun to talk about it. So thanks a lot and I'll see you later.